Hello again, this is Professor Evans. This video is for EET 1214C, and this is a multi-sim demonstration of how we're going to build a series AC circuit and take some measurements. So to begin, make sure you have your lab manual and locate the lab that is um, related to building your first AC circuit, depending on your edition of your lab manual, it may be lab 6 or it may be lab 7. So you're going to find that first lab where we're dealing with an introduction to AC circuits and we're going to build that lab that you see in your lab manual. So we're going to begin by building the circuit you see in figure one within that lab. To begin, I need an AC source. So I'm going to go to place, component. I'm going to change the grouped sources. And you'll notice that there's one here that says AC power. If you go to signal voltage sources, you also have one that says AC voltage source. This is the one we're gonna get. We're not gonna get AC power. We're going to go to signal voltage sources and select the one that says AC voltage right here. This is the one we want, even though the symbols look the same, they function slightly differently. And for this class, we're gonna stick to the AC voltage source that you get within the signal voltage sources group. So make sure that you have this AC voltage, that says AC sine voltage source as its function. Again, if I go back here, this one says AC power source. We want AC voltage source. So that's gonna be our source. I'm also gonna add whoops, I'm also gonna add my ground. and two resistors. So we're going to go ahead and connect our circuit. Let's set our re resistor values. R1 should be two kilo ohms. And then I'm gonna drag this down just a little bit to give me some space for our, um, our oscilloscope. All right, so we have our circuit. The last thing we're gonna to need to do is set our AC voltage source to the peak to peak value we want, as well as the frequency we want. In the lab manual, it says that the source is five volts peak to peak. 5 volts peak to peak. Now the only option I have here is a peak voltage, not peak to peak. So if I want 5 volts peak to peak, that means I want a 2.5 volt peak. So I'm going to make sure that I set my peak voltage for my sine wave, and then I'm also going to select the frequency. In this case, the frequency that is listed in the manual is 700 hertz. You don't have to worry about any of these other settings, but you do want to make sure before you start running your simulation that you have the correct voltage peak that you want, as well as the correct frequency that you want. When you're done, hit OK, and you'll see it update on the screen. Now I'm ready to start taking some measurements. The first thing that I'm going to show you are the probes. So we're going to hit play. After you hit play, you can go to probe. You can get a voltage probe. you can get a current probe. Notice that these probes have several values. The first one that keeps changing very often is an instantaneous value. So as the voltage source delivers that sine wave, that sine wave is changing constantly. That means the instantaneous current or the current at one particular instant or the current or the voltage at one particular instant is constantly changing, and that's why that top number is changing so much. It's as the sine wave moves, the voltage or the current is also changing. Then we have our peak-to-peak -peak RMS and DC values right here, as well as the frequency of the current, frequency of the voltage. So a voltage probe is a nice quick way to get some peak-to-peak -peak RMS or DC values from your circuit. Those are the probes. So you can use that to quickly get some information. Um, we have two types of voltage probes. If you want the voltage for just one particular resistor, you want to grab what's called a differential voltage, which goes across either end of that one resistor. So for example, 
I can see that the peak to peak voltage for R2 is 1.66 volts. The RMS value for R2 is 589 millivolts. I can see the frequency. So that's, that's how we use the probes to gather some quick information, some numerical information about our AC circuit. Now I'm gonna hit stop. I'll leave this probe here for later. And we're gonna add an oscilloscope to our circuit next. So over on the far right, you have a menu of buttons. You wanna scroll down until you can find the one that says oscilloscope. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so I have some space to put my oscilloscope in. All right, so our oscilloscope has two channels here. Channel A is what I'm gonna to connect to the input. So I can see that input sine wave at two and a half volts peak, 700 hertz. I also wanna see the voltage across R2. So I'm going to connect a second line here. This line, this connection is gonna give me the voltage from this node all the way to ground. So imagine taking two alligator clips and collecting, connecting those across R2 to get some information about R2. That's what channel B is gonna do because of where we've connected it. We've connected it across R2. We're still also going to ground channel A as well. And the next thing that we're gonna do is change the color of this wire. That's so that we can see the difference between channel A and channel B on our oscilloscope. So I'm gonna make it blue. So again, make sure you change the color of this wire. You'll see why in a minute. Now we're gonna double click that oscilloscope and hit play. And we see some waves. Hit stop. And now let's talk about how to adjust the window so that we can see what's going on. So the first thing I'm gonna do is scroll back a little bit. And now I want to adjust the window so that I can get a clearer picture of what's going on here. The time base will allow you to adjust your, uh, your waves in terms of how squished together or stretched out they are horizontally. So I can change the time base here and we can see those waves change horizontally. Remember that for your time base, two milliseconds per division means that from one square to the next horizontally represents two milliseconds of time. To change my um, Y values, I can change channel A. I can change its scale. So the lower that I make the scale, the taller that wave gets. And then the same thing for channel B. I can make it smaller. I can make it larger. So what we want to do first and foremost is make sure that channel A and channel B always have the same scale. If not, for example, let's say that I make channel B look like this. Channel B looks like it's much, much, much larger than channel A, but they're not using the same scale. So we don't wanna deceive ourselves by using two different scales for two different output channels. Make sure they both have the same scale. As for our time base, we wanna make sure that we can stretch it out so that we can have a nice clear picture to see what's going on. The red wave corresponds to the red wire going into the oscilloscope. So the red wave is our input. Our input is set at 2.5 volts peak. 2.5 volts peak. So that means, according to our scale, two volts per division. So channel A, as you go up or down from one box to the next, that represents two volts. So we can see that channel A travels like this. And it's just slightly larger than one box, which makes sense. Two volts per division is one box, and we set the peak to be two and a half. So our peak here is right at about two and a half volts. Now I want you to look at these arrows up here. These are called cursors or triggers, depending on what kind of oscilloscope that you use. The cursor can give you a measurement along any point of the wave. Notice how, as I drag this yellow cursor, the little dot here goes up and down the red wave, and then the numbers in the box change. 
So as I move this cursor, I can get any value along the wave. If I want to measure the blue wave, all I have to do is click the blue wave. And now the cursor is traveling along the blue wave. So for example, let's say that I want to measure the peak of the blue wave. If I drag it to the peak and look at channel B, the peak of channel B is 814.613 millivolts. All right? There are two of these triggers up here. Here's trigger one, it's got a small one on it. And here's trigger two. So as I drag this along, I can measure different values. Again, I can measure channel A or channel B using those triggers by just clicking the wave I want to measure. So the nice thing about a trigger is that you can use it to measure a peak value and uh, a period. For example, let's say that I go to trigger run and right click it and I say go to next Y max. It'll go to the peak here. Then I'm gonna take trigger two. I'm gonna pull it forward in front of trigger one right click it and tell it to go to the next Y max as well. Now I've got a peak to peak measurement here. If I go down in the window, T1 minus T2 is telling me the difference between T1 and T2. So between T1 and T2, there is a time difference of 1.49 milliseconds. That is my period. And if I use the reciprocal of 1.49 milliseconds, I'll see that that's about 700 Hertz which is exactly what we set the voltage source to in the first place. So we can use the triggers to measure a period and then calculate a frequency based off the period. We can use the triggers to also find a value. So I can see that right now at these peaks, channel A has a peak value of about 2.5 volts, which is exactly what we set the source to be. If I go to the blue wave, I'm now at the peak for those waves. And I can see that the peak voltage or the blue wave, which again, that's the voltage across the resistor. The blue wave is the voltage across the resistor. I can see the peak value of the voltage for the blue wave. This is how we use an oscilloscope to um, see a measurement. An AC signal is a great tool to use um, with an oscilloscope because you get to see these cool looking sine waves. And this is how we can take some measurements. So as a reminder, your time base tells you the amount of time that passes horizontally from one box to the next. So from this box to this box is one millisecond. Our scale for channel A and channel B tell us vertically how much voltage is represented with one box. So I'm at two volts per division, two volts, two volts per division. And then with the triggers, I can measure any value along the wave. So if I'm right now I'm on the blue wave and I can see that at this point in time, trigger two is telling me that the value of channel B is negative 802 millivolts and channel A is negative 2.409 volts. I can drag this trigger to a different spot to get a different measurement. So this is how we use the oscilloscope to take measures for a series AC circuit with a sinusoidal voltage source.